soon after that, somebody came to me and said, you know, remember what we prayed so and so? Ah, oh, it happened. You see, there's great power in praying in other tongues. In 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, and I'm reading from the source, New Testament. All of us believers. And Paul is talking about the Corinthians. All of us. So what kind of people were they? Were they like the Anglicans, the Baptists, the Presbyterians? No. Sadly, they were not. Now, my great-grandparents were Methodists. They were wonderful Christians. My grandparents were Methodists. All their, most of their children and their grandchildren were Methodists. My mother was a Methodist. So I'm not really saying anything against the Methodists. I'm just speaking facts. No. The Corinthians were nothing very much like them all even though the Methodists had pretty, had a fervor. My great-grandfather, my great-grandfather, after he migrated to Australia and found the Methodist churches here, he said, oh, they're different here. In England, we say praise the Lord in our meetings. And nobody in the Methodist churches in Australia said it. Or the Presbyterians. <laughs> You see, let's, let's get our facts straight. The Apostle Paul is speaking to the Corinthians who all spoke in tongues. Now, everybody has to admit that because everybody knows, according to their thinking, that the Corinthian church was so out of order because they had so much speaking in tongues that the Apostle Paul had to try and put them in order and, of course, get rid of the tongues, <laughs> which he never could. They all spoke in tongues. They all, to a large degree, prophesied because he said you may all prophesy one by one. He was talking to a live situation of thousands of people who lived in Corinth. And that's historically the figure. So when he says us, he's talking about people, one, who were born again and washed in the blood of Jesus and have salvation and have the gospel of God that is the power of God and the salvation, the gospel of Christ and believe in it. But the same people all spoke in tongues. So if you want to omit anything from the Bible, you can omit that chapter, that verse, it doesn't include you. Really. If you're not baptized with the Spirit speaking in other tongues, it does not include you. Now that's a solemn remark to make, and I've never made it before, but it's the truth. Let it include you. Get baptized with the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues. And it will include you. And this is what the Apostle Paul said. All of us, as there is no veil over our face like it was over Israel, reflects the Lord's splendor or glory as in a mirror. We are being transformed into the same image with more and more splendor by the Spirit of the Lord. We go to the translation from the Greek Orthodox Eastern Church, the Greek, from the Greek. And this is what they say in their footnotes because they say much the same thing with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror of the glory of the Lord, we're all being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory. And this is from the Lord, the Spirit. Now this is what they say in their footnotes. 
these verses are the biblical basis for the clause found in the Creed of Constantinople. The Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. So that's the Spirit who's being spoken about. Three. One Spirit from the three. The Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit. The Lord, who is Jesus Christ, the giver of life, who is God, we recognize as the Father. Trinity. There are three. They're there in the Old Testament. They were not, did not come into be, being with any early church or with the Roman Catholic Church. They came into being because they always were. In the book of 1 Enoch, it speaks of the, that other power. It speaks of Jesus Christ and the Father and that other power. And that other power is the Holy Spirit who brooded over the face of the waters in Genesis chapter 1, if you read the verse, the chapter. And then this footnote from this Greek Orthodox translation says, or literally transfigured. We're transfigured in our spirits. We go from glory into glory, some translations say. We have glory in us. Now when we are born again, as it says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, God, who caused the light to come out of darkness, again in Genesis 1, hath shone into our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And I think that's the King James translation. We have that. It's the glory shining in our hearts when we're born again and the light of the gospel of Christ shines in our heart. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He is our light. But then it says, this translation, what it means, we're tran not only transformed, it means we're transfigured. Transfigured, there's a change that goes on in our spirits. Now I have said that years ago, but I didn't know this translation. And I, what I get from this meaning is far more than ever I preached about because I didn't know this meaning. You think of Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. He was so transfigured that instead of appearing earthly, he appeared heavenly. In our spirits, there is a change often, particularly when we get a new anointing of speaking in other tongues. There is a change. We go from this glory to that, into this other glory in our spirits. Then another time we go into this other glory in our spirits. We're transfigured. There's a change from the earthly in us to the heavenly in us. It's happening in us. It's happening in us. We go from glory into glory. The LAB translation says, we go from glory into glory. The CPDV says, from at one glory to another. Net translation says, from one degree of glory to another. And Net says, from the Lord who is the Spirit, or the Pneuma. Well, I like what the Greek Orthodox translation tells us. It, from the Spirit is the Holy Spirit, it's the Lord Jesus, He is the giver of life, three, in the Spirit. 
So, we're transfigured by the Holy Spirit. We're transfigured by Jesus Christ. We're transfigured by the Heavenly Father. And we don't know it's happening, except we have these words of Scripture. And we're experiencing something heavenly, and we know that. Now, JMNT translation, and I believe it's true, suggest speaking of a from time to time transfiguration. So, from time to time when we're praying in other tongues, personally in particular, at home in particular, because that's where you do most of your praying in other tongues. You don't do much in church. Most of my praying in other tongues has always been at home. In fact, I can remember Russell here, when he was a little baby, kneeling down beside my bed with him in my arms and I'm praying away in other tongues. And I think now as I look back, I wish I'd been doing that for all of my children, but I just happened to be doing it for it, him because he was number two. When you get to number six, it's a bit different. You see, there's a transfiguration and we do it from time to time. And that means personally and individually, but it does happen in a meeting if everybody else is praying in other tongues. But how often are you in a meeting where everybody else is praying in other tongues? I have been to lots of prayer meetings in most of my life. Hardly ever did the people pray in other tongues. Now they had tearing meetings to get baptized in the spirit, but that wasn't prayer meeting. If they had prayer meetings, it was always in English, never in other tongues. And when my first husband, who's now in glory, and I were ministering in, in Christian Outreach Centre Brisbane with Clark Taylor, who had placed us there as pastors in our own right, and who at one time said, Seth and Irene are going to take the prayer meetings. So the prayer meetings were on a Tuesday night and only about five people used to go. The first night we were there, 100. So what we did then, which wasn't as good as what we've done of late, we would say, we're all going to pray about the same thing in other tongues, and then we're all going to about the same, pray about the same thing in English. So we did that week after week. And you know, I remember one Sunday, soon after that, somebody came to me and said, you know, remember what we prayed so and so? Ah, oh, it happened. You see, there's great power in praying in other tongues. And so JMNT says, it is a time, from time to time transfiguration that's going on in our spirits that we have never seen visibly or really don't know naturally. Just spiritually we know something's happened. You know. Now the Lord could give us visions. The Lord could do greater things than ever I've experienced. I, I, I would wish he would give me more. And I would, he would if we sought him. You think of Moses in the Septuagint. Numbers 12, verse 8. It says, he's seen the glory of the Lord. Can I read to you a footnote at the bottom of my Septuagint, the Orthodox Study Bible, that does include the King James Version, sadly, but the Septuagint is marvelous translation, and the footnotes of the Septuagint are wonderful, and the footnotes that they have at the bottom of the King James Version are so wonderful compared to any I have seen in any English Bible we possess, and I've had them all. Now this is despite their icons, which we don't believe in, and their, their vestments and everything, personally, never. It's a no-no. But somehow or other, they've got greater truths here, and of course they are quoting from early church fathers quite often, 
who happened to have been Greek speaking, Greek, Syrian, Armenian, even Russian. We lack that in our churches because the West has followed the Roman Catholic Church totally and uh, the King James Version totally, which is different from when it was first published in some respects. But this is what the footnote says uh, to 2 Corinthians 3, verses 17 and 18. The work of the Holy Spirit brings liberty, freeing us to behold God and have open access to him. Created as the image of God, we see his uncreated image, the Son, the glory of the Lord, in two ways. Through the Son's deified humanity and in the power of the Spirit. As we behold him, we become what we were created to be. God is infinite, therefore, growing in his image and glory has no limits. We shall see God more clearly and ever be transformed into his likeness. Well, I, I think that's a wonderful meaning that they have put. You don't see anything that good at the bottom of our English translations. I would suggest everybody gets the Orthodox Study Bible of the Septuagint, even if it does include the King James. But Lumpkin, a uh, Baptist scholar, very brilliant, has put out a translation of, called The Net, or he's involved in that. And Lumpkin has wonderful translations of One Enoch and all those lost books. He's a wonderful scholar even though he doesn't understand about the Jews at the end of the age, as none of them ever do, you have to study it if you want to know, because they've hidden it from us deliberately. Spawns of the devil. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, LHB. Has shone in our hearts, give, give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, in the face of Jesus Christ. British Basic English, BBE, says, outshining, he is of his glory, radiance. ERV says, the effulgence of the glory of God. In 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, JMT, and I want to repeat it, says, by the Holy Ghost. So when we pray in other tongues, it's something that is supernatural, that is by the Holy Ghost. And through praying in tongues, I would, all, I would say alone, only through praying in tongues can we go from glory to glory. Only through praying in tongues. You, don't, you never have a transfiguration without a, a supernatural experience. Think how supernatural the experience was for Peter, James and John and the man of transfiguration. Here's Jesus, Jesus, totally transfigured, like full of soap, as white as snow, it says, of his garment. Even his garment. Even his earthly robe was transfigured. Let alone his face and his form. And it's not recorded in the scriptures. Now, personally, I think there have been devious people at work removing it. Why wouldn't it be told? It speaks about the shepherds when Jesus was born. The glory shone around them and they were just shepherds, not despising shepherds. What I mean is they were just out there in the field. Maybe in their hearts they looked for the Messiah, I don't know. Suddenly they hear angels and the glory of God shines all around. We are only told that much. 
we're not told of their experience. We're not told what the glory looked like. And it's the same with the story of the Mount on the Mount of Transfiguration. There are many gaps. And Moses and Eliadab, Elijah appeared in glory. We have no mention of the reaction from Peter, James and John, except what Peter said. We don't know really what he saw. He just saw Moses and Elijah in glory. And he knew they were Moses and Elijah and he'd never seen a picture or a photo of Moses and Elijah. He was in touch with the heavenly scene. And when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we are supposed to be in touch with the heavenly scene. In touch. In touch. Peter, James and John didn't handle Moses and Elijah. They didn't handle Jesus at that time. But John said in his epistle about Jesus on earth, whom we have hand, our hands have handled. By John leant against the bosom of Jesus at the Last Supper. His head was touching him. He said, our hands have handled Jesus. We've held his hands. We've shaken his hands. Maybe they've kissed him. It's not recorded in the scriptures, but they handled him. Just one brief phrase. When he was on earth, but when he was transfigured, they couldn't handle him. Because they had an earthly touch. And they didn't have that spiritual touch yet. Peter got a spiritual touch when he had a vision of those other things we described in the book of Peter because we're told about it. But we're not told about any spiritual touch Peter had in the Gospels, in uh, Luke or Mark or Matthew. We're not told about it. Not told about it. But he had it. He had the spiritual touch because he saw spiritually with spiritual eyes by the Spirit of God as he looked at Jesus. Now nothing of that is described in the scriptures. You have to do a bit of thinking and have some knowledge a little bit of the glory of God to be able even to say what I just said then. Because I've never heard anybody say it. Anything like it. Now that doesn't mean they haven't. It just means I haven't heard it. Because it was never, it was never said by any preacher I listened to. And I have never said it before. So when we're praying in the Holy Ghost, we have to be so in touch with the Spirit of God, there's a transfiguration going on in our spirits. And I have said this in sermons even going back years. I believe we take it into heaven with us. I believe we take that transfiguration into heaven with us. Because it's, it's done. It's happened. It's eternal. Anything done by the Spirit of God is eternal unless we fall out of Christ. So we have this wonderful wonderful promise of being changed from one glory into another. Glory, brothers and sisters. Heavenly glory in which Moses and Elijah appeared. Heavenly glory. And we are changed from one glory into this heavenly glory. From that heavenly glory into the next heavenly glory. From that heavenly glory into another heavenly glory. All the time. I can only hope that the people who heard me saying these things in sermons remember them 
enough to do them. But you see, most of us forget lots of material we hear. That's why if you have my videos or DVDs, it does pay to go over them and over them. Because this is what I do with truth. I go over it and over it and over it. Because like everybody else, I forget. That's why I like to write it down, then I don't forget because I've got it written before me. So I would encourage us all to get into the Holy Ghost, to pray in other tongues, and to experience this change from one glory into another. Amen. Shall we pray, all of us here? O oh Lord, let us be changed from glory to glory as we pursue this praying in other tongues. Let us just have a time of praying in tongues. Here is Sarahaka Barabataku Saharatu Kudara Hetaka the Ritika Sarataka. Here is Sarahaka with the Hataka the Ritika, the Ritika Sahata with the Hataka Rita. Here is Sarahata with the Haka with the Hataka Ritika Sahataka the Ritika. Here is Sarahasaka the Ritika, the Ritika, the Ritika Sahata with the Kesaka the Hat. Here is Sarahataka Ritika Sahata Hataka Rita Hataka the Ritika the Hat. Here is Sarahaka the Hataki has. Here is the Harry Hit to Korea, Sakahari Hit to Kaha, Sakahari Hit. Here is Sarah Hakarahu Kuri Hit Sakarahu Kuri Hit. Here is Hiru Kuri Hit to Korea, Sakarahu 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 Kuri Hit to Korea, here he had a cabari, he had a cabari, he had a cabari. He never had to go here. Here he covered the hackery. 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 And through praying in tongues, I would all, I would say alone, only through praying in tongues, can we go from glory to glory?